Today's guest is Scott Novus. Now, Scott has an interesting business. He is a founder of a company called Bravos, which is a video game business, but is using video games to really help and boost the retention of staff in organizations and really to improve the engagement of, of people in organizations. Very, very interesting, very you know, thought-provoking um, interview from my perspective, because it was, you know, just when you think about video games, it's, it's kind of got a bit of a bad rap in some places, and they're actually seen sometimes as, as something negative. But here, when you actually hear Scott talk about how you can bring those into the organization, it improves the engagement with people with each other because, you know, COVID, everybody working remotely, the tasks get done, and, and, and that's fine. That's great. And I think that most organizations would say that, you know, the efficiency has been fine, but the engagement with the organization and the engagement with our colleagues, you know, there's no opportunity to have a, you know, a cup of coffee in the canteen, go out to the coffee shop, you know, meet at the proverbial water cooler and have that social chat that is actually such an important part of the working environment. And they're using video games. To, to, to replicate that and to bring people together in a fun way, but also using it in terms of helping people to understand how to be more effective in teams and how to be a really good team member. So very innovative, very creative, very worthwhile. I would encourage you to listen to. If you enjoy the interview, please go and give us a review and, and because that helps us to get to a wider audience. But in the meantime, sit back and enjoy very interesting and coming up with a very different angle on video games and how that can really be integrated into the, the workplace is uh, Scott Novus. Scott, it's a great pleasure to have you here on the podcast today. I'm really looking forward to this because this would be something with a bit of a difference. I, I know from looking at your bio. So thank you for joining us. I'm really delighted to have you here. Oh, John, thank you so much for having me here. And thank you for uh, your audience for paying attention to this topic. It's something I'm very passionate about. Yeah, I, I, I know you are, and, I'm, I, and it comes through. But maybe just to give context, maybe you might just give a little bit of, back, of your own background so that people know where you come from and what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my one-minute resume, I have two engineering degrees, 11 patents. I was a VP for the Walt Disney Company, and I'm probably best known for being the founder of this funky company in the United States called Game Truck. We do video game birthday parties for kids, like... 30,000 a year. We've been doing this for a decade and a half. We've entertained millions of people. And what I'm doing today and why I'm on the show is we saw what was happening with, you know, so many teams going to remote work and love disconnection shooting through the roof. We know a lot about how games help people connect and play together. And we thought, you know, adults need help too. And mm. if you followed Simon Sinek and some of the other people that are out there, they're beginning to talk more and more about something I believe for a long time we need to play together more and, and yeah so i mean it, when you talk about that because i mean if you think about uh, you know my, my audience a lot of them would be in the corporate world and the minute you can say okay we've got video games that's going odd right uh, that's a bit that's a bit that's a bit left field but you know with the, with right. the organization brave uh, bravest that, that you you do help businesses increase retention using video games with their employee with their employees how do you do that and how does it actually, what do you do and how does that help improve retention? No, fantastic. So um, to understand the problem, what we've learned, and this happened in my own company because we went from completely in person to completely virtual. And what we learned is that the first thing everybody did is they just went to task work. So you're on a Zoom call, you're whatever it is, Google Meet, whatever your tool is, and people were only doing task work together. We lost the environment. Most offices are actually engineered to create social dynamics. We might not have liked open office planning, but what it did is it forced social interaction. Think of the break room, the water cooler. You could hear people talking. And what you got from that were um, a key to human connection called unstructured, unplanned conversations. It's like, that's the magic sauce that allows people to begin to form relationships, connections, and friendships. 
When we're only doing task work, we're literally systematically converting our employees into Upwork and Fiverr contractors. They don't have any connection to anybody. It's only dopamine driven, get a thing done, move on to the next one. We're missing and we're, we're systematically eliminating those interstitial interactions that people have. And so the exact thing that what you just said, video games, sounds frivolous, doesn't sound silly, but its strength is nobody will take it seriously because it's not a serious thing. It allows people to relax. And one superpower about video games is that when people participate in them, they can only participate as themselves. If you were teaching me a topic or I was teaching you, you would adapt your behavior to my expectations. We all do it. We all learned it in school. But when we play a game, the activity engagement actually forces us out of that sort of impression management into being authentic. We can only engage as ourselves. And once we do that, now we've created this space where we're all aligned, we're synchronized because we're doing the same activities and we begin to have a common shared experience we could talk about together in ways we never planned for or anticipated. So we're really being intentional about creating the type of interaction we used to get for free from being in the office. We're basically trying to hold an event where you can make a friend. And we all know from engagement, one of the most important things you can do is have a friend at work. And so that's one of the stress factors that's happening in these remote work teams. We're losing the opportunities to make those friendships. People aren't loyal to companies, they're loyal to the people they work with. Yeah. And if we have no relationship with the people we work with, Hello, massive turnover. So give me an example of, okay, you've got an organization and somebody says, okay, you know, I'll go for this. I want to come back and talk a little bit of my, maybe about how kind of video games get a bad rap in some places and, and, and how you deal with that. But let's say, okay, the company has agreed. What do you actually do? So you've got a group of people that are right. working remotely. They might even be working in different countries and time zones, whatever it might be. What yes. do you actually do and how do you get them to engage? Oh, fantastic. So one of the things we've been doing for years is, you know, video games have been solving this problem for decades. So we're just taking that technology and bringing it into the office environment. What we do is we want to handle everything from the moment you would say, I want to do this for my team. So we have a live commentator. So a live host is one of the key, like a facilitator of fun somebody that is going to manage all of this for you. Um, we have live technical support. So a producer or a tournament organizer. So there's real human beings on the line while you're playing, managing it. So what we do is we set up a structured event and depending upon the size of the group uh, that you're trying to engage from your personal team to your department, it could be like you said, a multinational group, we'll pick the correct activity that you can all do together. So we have a range of games, and this is probably a really important part. We understand technology, so this has to be, you never wanna call the IT department. Nobody mm -hmm. wants to bother them or be scared by them or any of the other things or irritate them. So these have to be able to run in a browser or run on your phone so that it's an hour. We understand that we gotta fit this in 60 minutes, maybe it's over lunch, and you know our recommendation is get a DoorDash or a Grubhub or whatever your local service is, buy your staff lunch, and then we'll get into a game. It could be code names, it could be Hacksball, it could be, it depends on the effect you're trying to create and the group size you're trying to connect with. The bigger the group, the weaker the connection, the smaller the group, the stronger the connection and the more interactive we can get. But essentially we're gonna recommend an experience for that group that's going to allow them to get in sync and create these shared experiences they're going to be able to talk about during and after the experience. So we set it up, give you the marketing material, we'll set up all the links, basically you guys log in and our commentators, it's, you know, I don't know if you had this when you were growing up in Ireland. In the US, a really big thing here is like Little League. And one of the biggest days of the year was when they bring out the speakers and somebody would announce johnny's coming up to bat just hearing your name on the speakers in front of the crowd is this level of like recognition and pride and that's what the commentator gives you the commentator gives you this the host of driving engagement like mm. one of the metrics we track is i don't really care who wins it's 
how many chats were there? How much engagement actually happened? Like who's interacting? And they're really good at pulling people in and drawing them in so that people feel included and participative. And so within that 60 minutes, they're getting a chance to connect in a way where there's no expectations, who's gonna take this seriously because it's a game, but now they're getting to open up and be more authentic and right. take a little bit of the performance hat off and get to know each other again, the way we used to when we're trying to trying to figure out where to go for lunch. Yeah, you know, exactly. So those times. So, so yeah, yeah, God knows. Yeah, gosh, it's hard to remember in, in some ways, isn't it? But is, is it a single one-off event? Is it a series of events? Is it a program over a period of time? What works best? That is a fantastic question. We're at the very beginning of this. Our recommendation and the most successful companies have done a series of events. And so they'll do one a quarter, one a month, um, and one of our, like one of the number one pieces of advice, if people, if nothing else they take away from this, one of my recommendations is form a fun committee. And one of the things you'll get out of a fun committee is you're gonna get two huge benefits. Number one, the people that are most desperate in your organization for human connection are the ones that are gonna volunteer for this. So you're gonna, for free, meet their needs because they're gonna connect with the other people that are dying to connect with like-minded people that are buried in task work. And they're gonna start figuring out what are some of the activities they can do. We love to come alongside those organizations and help them by going, here's some interactive tools, technology, things you can do for your fun events. And the other advantage you get out of that fun committee is now people that are in the environment are supplementing the leader with like boots on the ground view of this is what it feels like in the team. And here's what we wanna be able to do about it. So it puts the leader in the position of just the best kind of leadership support. Yes, thank you for helping me solve this problem. Here you go. And so their, their goal is to bring solutions that leadership can endorse because like one of the things we've observed, it's really, really difficult for the leader to run an event like this because there's too much friction in terms of, you can't make a mistake. And play is all about creating the safety to make mistakes. And so being able to delegate, this is an environment where people are going to screw up and it's okay. That's how we learn. It's at the edge, that's what play does for us. A guy named Yak Panskip actually found out that there's neural circuitry in our heads. We are wired for play. And when we deny that, it's a depreciation of value that when we experience that, we're demotivated. So getting people to play, they have to be able to fail and know it's okay. And that's why silly video games are magic because who cares if you're good? Yeah, like you can thing. safely screw up there and have fun with it. In all the surveys we've done of all the companies we work with, 80% of the employees, no matter how many times people say it, are like, if I make a mistake on my job, it's career suicide. They're terrified of making mistakes. And the only problem with that is it cuts you off from learning. It holds you back from resiliency. So we use this as like training wheels for people to get comfortable and forgive each other and support each other. Because John, if I can make it okay for you to learn by trying something you're not good at and getting good at it and making mistakes, you can make it okay for me. That This is probably one of the biggest gaps in leadership is so much leadership is like a bicycle tire. The leader's in the hub and the spokes go out in all the directions, but we don't have enough good tools to help form the tire yeah. and the wheel, the rim that holds the spokes together. Because yeah. that the employees have to do that for each other. Yeah. And do you have, I mean, on the work that you've done, I mean, I don't know whether you, at the stage you do have now, do you have any data on how doing this improves retention? Well, I only have my own company to look at for that, but we're in the process of gathering it. Um, we started really moving into the corporate space last fall. I mean, nice. this fall, actually, as we started getting more and more like, hey, can you do this for, you know where it was? It was schools. Because we were doing events for kids. A lot of kids were remote. So we were doing a lot of virtual events for kids. And the teachers are going, can you do this for us? And we're like, yeah, absolutely. 100% we can do events for you. So as we started pulling the teachers together, we started getting more requests for corporate and other events. We thought we need to make sure we have a solution that meets the needs of professionals. And so we don't have a ton of data. I can just give you a, a two stories. When we first went remote, we thought we were killing it. Everybody was available. Everybody was engaged. We were working our way through a really challenging time for us with COVID. 
And we thought, we've got this. And one of my top employees resigned. And I was like blindsided by it. In his exit interview, he said, none of this has anything to do with me. And that was that moment of like, oh my God, we are systematically isolating ourselves. We're really connected, but we're not, not to each other. And so we formed a fund committee and we started digging into it. And we have to be intentional about creating those moments where we, we know each other and we care about each other. Another great tip from uh, the entrepreneurial operating system is to open every online meeting with a segue. Give me a, if especially if we only see these people once a week, give me a personal win, yeah, give me a professional yeah. win. Just like, let's, let's talk about each other a little bit. When we started rolling out our fun committee and our monthly events, somebody went after my marketing director. I mean, he's a really talented guy and it was a big company and we couldn't compete with all the things they could throw at him. And in the end, he decided to stay with us because he couldn't imagine building the team at this other company the way he had built it where we are. And it went directly to all the things we're talking about. He's involved in the fund committee and it's the, the, the leadership and connection of how everybody's going. He knows everybody he works with. We yeah. all do. Now we're a small company, but you're talking about 20 people. That's, you know, Jeff Bezos, two pizzas, right? Absolutely. Yes. It falls into that. So in, in terms of for, to go into an organization, do you bring all of the technology, everything that they need? Because I can, I can hear somebody in the IT department, oh, we've got firewalls, security, all that sort of stuff, data protection. We can't do that. As long as they don't block an IP address for one of the websites that we're using, they don't need to bring anything. We're bringing things that are generally widely available. And so they're, you know, we'll give a list to um, the buyer saying, hey, make sure that we can, you can access these websites. As long as yeah. you can access these websites, that's one of the other reasons we want them playable on a phone, because usually the IT department doesn't block somebody's phone. Sure. Um, but, you know, definitely there's, there's all the way up. There are groups that actually um, have video game, you know, we'll do proper full blown video game things, but that's almost always played with people's, they're at home. So they're gonna use their Xbox or their PlayStation yeah. or their Nintendo Switch. And we can definitely do that. But our high, as I tell my team, this has to be a game your mom can get into. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, in terms, of, cause I know one of the things that you talk about is that, you can use the video games to improve teamwork. And I'm just curious about, because that's very, I mean, okay, to come in and to kind of, okay, you know, to have a bit of fun and, and all of what that goes with that, that's great. But if you're going in specifically to say, okay, well, one of the, the, our objective here is to improve teamwork. How do you achieve that with the use of the video games? Okay, so there is a genre of video games most people aren't aware of that are cooperative based. And so I can give you two examples. One is called Bomb Corp, and we tend to run that one. And I kind of like it because it's it captures the essence of our fear of making a mistake at work. Mm -hmm. And in that particular game, what will happen is four players will be given clues to defuse a bomb, and each person has a piece of information. And what they have to do is communicate with each other very quickly. And the nature of the game is designed so that when you put people under pressure, that's when they lock up. And so because there's a clock and a bomb could go off, even though it's make-believe, people intrinsically mm -hmm. feel that pressure. So they're getting the opportunity to begin to practice the techniques of effective communication. And this is part of a, a more high-end workshop that I facilitate called Culture Kitchen. And what we do is we take the work that Google did in Project Aristotle and we give them the tools to create what's called psychological safety. So they go into this environment and they practice it over and over again of learning um, more effective ways. Like I'll give you one tip for your audience. One thing that will revolutionize the way you talk to people, get rid of the word why. Why is not a question, it's only an answer. When you start asking people how and what questions, it transforms the way that you talk to people, especially if you're dealing with things that go wrong or difficult. How, what was happening for you? How did that happen? What did this come around? Why creates defensiveness? Why did you do that? Now somebody has got to justify what you want to do is help somebody explore the experience so they can learn from it. And so in the game, we keep putting people in situations where they're going to fail, but they've got to communicate effectively and then we give them tools to improve that communication so they can learn faster and support each other in the process. In person, we use a game called Overcooked 
and everybody's a chef in a kitchen. Any chef can do any task. No chef can do every task. You will have to work together. And because they're not competing with each other, but cooperating, we go through all those same psychologies, only this one's like full blown game and it has a beautiful progression so that when you master one level, we can then lay a new challenge and show you how even small changes can impact that synchronized team performance and help a team learn how to rapidly resync and master that new challenge. We're like, great, here's a new challenge because I'm a gamer, so I view life and a career a lot like a video game. What's your reward for solving hard problems? You get a harder problem to solve, right? You level up, you move up to the next level. It doesn't get easier. It's like now you have a successful product. Now everybody wants it. Oh man, we got to bring people on board. We got to get them in sync. Like all of these things happen. And the skill we want to learn is rapid adaptation. We want to learn resiliency. So we use the video game to create a safe place for us to fail so we can practice those skills and then transfer it back to work. Yeah, I think it's I think what you're doing is 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 fascinating. And I can certainly see a, a very, very real and a positive role for what for what you're doing. In in, in a sense, was was COVID kind of the perfect storm for 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 rolling out the business? You know, it turned out that way. When we started, we were I'm sure I'm sure it didn't feel person. like that when you started. No, I'm sure. oh no. <laughs> Yeah, well, I have, you know what pivot is? It's a hockey term. It means getting checked face first into the boards. You will stop. You will change directions. It will hurt. Yeah. Um, and we were basically shut down with like three days notice. And, and, you know, I turned to my team and it was one of those lessons of vision. Because what we were focused on, like I said, is we want to create an environment where you can make a friend. And somebody said, do we have to do that in person? And my team was like, we could do that online. And four days later, we did our first virtual esport tournament, and it, we just it took off because we were like, for whatever reason, in the right position at the right time to start running virtual events, and that happened in the school market, in the college market, where suddenly you had like, what's different about us and what we do? We run events for private groups, people you already know that you want to know better. 99% of the rest of the industry, they're like, look how many people we got come to our event. I'm like, who cares? I want to help you connect with people you already know and want to connect with. So that could be people that you used to go to school with, but you can't go to class and see each other anymore. You can't hang out with. So we create events where you can play together. People you used to work with and see in the office every day. Let's create that intentional water cooler time where we can come together and connect with and remember why we like working together. So this opened a door for us we didn't even really see was there and it, it transformed our company yeah because i can also see i mean as you well know that you know so many people have joined organizations during this time and have never actually met their colleagues you know whatever right. that you knew beforehand <laughs> but you've never met them and you know so they do not feel that connection or it's very difficult for them to feel that connection. And I can see how this, this could really help enormously to, 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 to really embed people into organizations like that and to build the relationships. Because you said it's, 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 it's all about the relationship. You're absolutely right. Because look, and I'm sure a lot of your clients have phenomenal onboarding, but you know, one of the fears you always hear is like, are people really reading these books? Are they really doing it? Think of it this way. If I just gave you a book on golf, but I never let you pick up a club and swing and try to hit a ball. What do you know about golf? So a lot of what we do with play is create the environment where it's okay to practice being part of the organization and doing something together. It's like, oh, that's how we interact. That's what we do. It's okay to infuse games with your company values. Like we had an amazing event with a, a company in Florida where they interrupted the game in the middle of the game to go, wait a minute, this is not how we work together. This is broken. And one of their high values was raise a hand. When something's broken, everybody stops, figures out what's wrong and fixes it. That's not baked into the game, but you always have a pause key. They hit pause, reoriented themselves, and management was like thrilled because they were watching their employees live the values, their, 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 their upcoming leaders lived it, role modeled it for the new employees so they could see what was happening. And they were like, yes, this is what we want in our organization. Just do not stubbornly plow through a broken process because you got a deadline to hit. Get it right 
so that we fix it once and it stays fixed and we can keep going forward. So oh, those are the examples of like, when do we practice being good at business? Uh, you know, yeah. all the best sports teams practice. And that's, you know, I'm a huge advocate for doing these types of activities, not just for retention, but also that opportunity for us to practice the things that we're saying, you know, I, I can't really afford to screw up with a client, but internally we can screw up around each other going, well, that was awful. How do yeah. we fix it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, no, I, I, I think... I, I think it's actually so powerful. And I think that, that there's a huge opportunity for that. And, and I think what you're doing is very innovative, very creative, and you're bringing something that's, that, that exists and bring it into a different area that I, I think can be, can be hugely beneficial. Scott, this is fascinating. I really am interested in what you're doing. Before we wrap up, two questions I ask everybody. One is a book um, that they've read other than a book that they may, may have written themselves and that has made an impact upon them. What's the book? Well, I, I'm going to go with the book. I, uh, I, you and I talked about this a little bit earlier. Yeah. I'm going to recommend King Warrior Magician Lover uh, by Robert Moore. And that how that book impacted me is it laid out a foundation and a clarity for mature leadership I hadn't seen before. And it really resonated with me because it hit me that as a leader of my organization, I'm trying to create an orderly, stable environment where my team and my clients can flourish. And so that it's not about me directly, and it's about what is the environment and the space we're creating where people feel like they belong and they feel like they can live their, you know, their best, they can actualize their best career selves. And that model, like what it takes to achieve that, the harmony of the different um, personality traits within us, that it takes to become that kind of mature leader, I found very inspirational um, and it's endless. It's an ongoing process I try to practice daily improving, but I found it very valuable. Yeah, that sounds um, and fascinating. Was, I, and I'm yeah. delighted to, to actually, for a, that's a book I've never heard of, uh, be honest. And uh, so that definitely goes on the list because it sounds fascinating. The other, the other question, because I'm always fascinated by uh, successful people when they talk, because one thing they have in common, they've, they've got you know rituals. Now, there may be different rituals, but they have rituals. And I'm just curious about what your rituals are, if you're happy to share them, and what they do for you. Absolutely. I have probably the anchor of my rituals. I have an 85-pound yellow lab that needs to be walked. So every morning, I walk the dog. Um, so that ends up being like a walking meditation. And I listen to audiobooks while I'm walking the dog. So that gives me the opportunity to get new information and connect it. And the last piece of that is I journal. Um, and uh, I have heard it said that writing is the same as thinking. So if you want to improve your thinking, which is something I'm always trying to do, journaling out, like when I, after I listen to something, I'm like, what did it mean to me? Even a page can help me clarify and share and retain what I've learned while I was listening. So I have found that to be very valuable. Yeah, I think journaling is is one of the most uh, powerful things that you can do. I really do. It's it's simple. God knows it's not complicated, and uh, but it's it's so immensely powerful. Scott, thank you so much for being a guest here today. It was fantastic to have you on the show. I love what you're doing. I think it's very creative, and I think there's a huge opportunity for organisations to grasp it. Where can people get in touch with you? We we'll put in the show notes, but where can they get in touch with you if they're listening right now? Absolutely. The easiest way is to go to my website, scottnovis.com slash play. And all the resources I've talked about from this talk will be on that website, including how to join one of our funinars. So if you want to, who wants to go to a webinar? If you want to actually see what this looks like in practice, you can jump in and see how we run events and get a handle on what it would be like for your organization. And we have a great little PDF on how to form a fun committee. So and I'm on LinkedIn and Twitter, and those are the easiest ways to connect with me. Great. Scott, again, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you, John. It was awesome being here.